Welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna get ready to go to the beach and do a how to build a sandcastle at the beach using kind of more traditional methods than what we've, what we've been doing um, at our house. What we're gonna do is show you how to build a sandcastle and I'm gonna start off by showing you these tools and how to use them real quick and then we'll get to the beach and we'll get right to this workshop. Let's get right to it. Hi, Cher. I don't think you'll be able to come on this job. We're gonna be at the beach and I don't think they're gonna let you come because you're a dog. Next time, Cher. Here's a sampling of the tools that we're gonna be using on this um, tutorial on how to build a sandcastle. You'll need shovels. We like some that are round, square, levels. Um, well, the one that's the most important is probably the smallest one, and you'll see that when we're actually working with it. Casting tubes, pallet knives, spreader trowels and hand trowels, a brush, a straw, with the string on it so that we can put it around our neck. This is called a casting bucket. We've taken a um, keyhole saw and we've cut the bottom of this bucket out so that we can fill it with sand and water and compact it and lift it off. And some buckets of different sizes to carry water. We're gonna use a lot of water. And a wagon to get all our equipment down to the beach. This wagon has sides and we're gonna put the sides on it. So, this is kind of the big picture of what we need for tools. We're also going to be bringing a, a few beach chairs and a little pop-up half tent and some beverages. So these are all the comfort things to make your full day a great day. Let's get right to it. One of the tools I didn't mention on the last clip is this packer. It's a garden packer. It's very important. Without the packer, you can't get the sand to be compressed and packed together, and your sand sculpture won't hold. So that's kind of one of our secrets, is having the patience to use one of those packers to make sure your sand is soaked and compressed and packed all the way through. We're back down here at the beach, the same beach, and we're gonna do a sand castle, a real live, honest to god traditional sand, sand castle. castle right and there's oh yeah co is there confidence in this because look i wore this pin you see what that pin is pull a rabbit out of the hat yeah pull a rabbit out of the hat okay and this is going to be a class so i think greg's going to put in what tools you've already done those segments yeah we're going to show you how to do kind of all the major steps to building a sandcastle today. So let's get right to it. Let's do it. Let's get to the beach. Okay, so we just got down to the beach and it's time to have our first staff meeting. And this is the tide. The thing we tide. do is uh, check the tide finder. So the tide's going out, so we can start building pretty close to where the water line is and take advantage of being closer to the water's edge for carrying water and getting water and digging a hole and having the hole fill. And maybe later. Sunsets when it hits this black line here. Okay. And sun rises the uh, orange line. Excellent. Well, we're down here at the beach now, and there's Greg taping. So we brought our wagon, which means we brought a bunch of equipment. So, because we want to show you how to really do a sandcastle. We need the real thing. So, this is our base camp. We need to be comfortable while we're doing this. And you do too, so you might want to start with a base camp. Okay, so while I was claiming the entire tent to myself, Alex, take it away loudly. Before loudly. We... Before we get started. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> we can hear that. We have to make sure that our area is laid out and we know where we're going to be making our sculpture, where we want to take sand from and put sand to, where we want to get our water from, and where we want to focus all our efforts. The first stage of sandcastle building 
It's very physical. You're just digging ditches to make the blank canvas that you later turn into great art. So in order to use the most out of all our efforts, we want to be very intentional with how we build up our blank canvas. So it helps to take a shovel or a stick or anything else that you want and use it to draw on the sand where you think you want to position the various parts of your castle. For us today, I think we're going to stay smaller. We're just going to do uh, one single circular mound that will build everything on top of it. So I drew a big circle. I hope you can see like that. that. And what we'll do is we'll take I look, the sun the sand is so bright. from the side and throw it in the middle there. By doing that, we'll be adding sand where it needs to go and taking sand from where it needs to be taken away. If we dig it from way over there and bring it over here, we're wasting a lot of energy, but if we start digging inside our circle, well, maybe later we'll need this sand to be part of our sculpture and we'll need to fill it back in. So if we're smart about how we plan it and set it up, we'll be the most effort and most hard for all the input that you put in. So Alex is starting to dig a, um, we call it a volcano, so that we can contain the water inside of the sculpture uh, while we do the pound up, because water is a precious commodity. Excellent. So we've created this volcano and the water is ponding inside, which allows us to capture it and not have all the water flow out over the ocean. And then I'm packing it very hard while it's wet. And you gotta be careful of your toes. We have some sculptors that work with us. They wear like heavy boots when they're doing this. They've like dedicated a pair of old junky heavy boots that they know are gonna get really wet really sandy, ruined, okay, and they're sand. used for sand sculpture. Alex is taking sand from the outside perimeter and adding that to the center of what we call the volcano. So in a second here, it's going to be time for more water. After some discussion, Greg and Alex have decided to build, they're going to dig a big hole and that's going to be our water source. Once you reach a certain point as you're digging your well, you'll find that the puddling water will just make your well grow bigger and wider and wider. So that way you don't need to keep on going down. You just let the, this water soaking in and make your hole bigger for you. And all you just gotta do is take a scoop, nice wet stuff, slap it on down. Ooh, that's... If this, if this was oil or something. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't it be nice if you could find it, gold down Yeah, there? you just dig down and there you go. But it is making our lives easier, so we're, Showing you some professional master class sand sculpting tips and secrets. And I'm trying to get my shadow out of all these pictures. This is affectionately known as the pound up. He's doing the sides to strengthen that, fortify it besides compacting on the top. Switching off, taking turns, adding water. It's just sand and water and hard work. They're still packing. This takes patience, it takes time. Alex has just given the word that it's time for the casting bucket. Shh. 
Show us what makes that a casting bucket. <laughs> we've uh, taken a regular five gallon bucket and we've cut it out the bottom out we drill one hole you can see the hole and then we use a keyhole saw or a jigsaw and just cut the bottom out and we're going to fill that with sand water compact sand water compact fully saturated before we lift it off. We may telescope it too. Stand by, check it out. We put sand in first till about three or four inches high so that the water that gets put in doesn't blow out of the bottom. And Alex is doing a great job of getting completely saturated wet sand. It's actually better to get really close in. Okay, I'm not going to get their heads. People I'm moving can. in. He's going to do a technique called telescoping where he can extend the length of the bucket use here. Awesome. And after telescoping, they're back at it again. And I would say you can do that for about 50% of the bucket height, Greg, or yeah. would you say 75%? Uh, maybe not. Just maybe like not. So, you know, you can telescope one half the length of the bucket. I hope you understand that. Anything else? It's pretty if risky. You have good sand. You can do more. Oh, okay. So, if you have good sand. Sometimes you can't even get the whole bucket off. With the bad sand, you'll do everything right. You'll you'll take it off, and it will just immediately decompose. Okay, so that's how we turn a bucket upside down. As you can yep. see, yep. we don't turn buckets upside down, and we don't use plastic anything. This is all heavy, heavy construction tools. And in a little bit, we're going to start pulling out the masonry tools. Awesome. We got a, the first casting off for the main tower. We're going to teach you how to carve this tower in sand. So Greg's just set a casting tool. This is what we call a casting tool. And it's really just PVC pipe cut. We painted it Arcasan blue. And um, we have these in all sizes. All lengths and all diameters. Same thing, sand and water. They're going to do the same thing. But we need to get that graduated look that castles have, the castle turrets, the main buildings of the castle. Greg just telescoped the piece the tool upward a little bit as you can see look closely it's not resting on the bottom he just pulled it up again it's this easier is, to get off move in the end it's going it's easier to remove in the end and as you see he's doing that same sand water and he's mixing, he's mixing in there. He's getting it all mixed together. It's a little dry, you see that? A little dry there on the top. That's right. They're very flexible. You can use them for big stuff and little stuff or anything you can do. And they're hardier than the kitchen chair. They're probably made for coming out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stainless steel, very nice. Doesn't rust with all that salty water from the ocean. Then once we have our medium sized things done, we want to get into the little details. We want to carve out a little staircase and do stair by stair, maybe make some letters or some intricate details. We use our smallest tools. These are painter's palette knives. We find these at art supply stores and usually painters use them to take a little dab. So we're taking our biggest tool. What we're going to do is we're going to make the roof of this castle. Now when we're carving, it's really important that we move around our sculpture. 
that we're actively looking at it from different angles, different directions, because it's three dimensions. After all, we're not painting from one fixed point of view. We're making an object in space. So it's a really common tendency for people to stay in one spot, just parked, they get comfortable, and they, from that angle, they make a masterpiece. But then they walk two feet over to the side and they realize, ah, shoot, this is lopsided. Oh no. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit off each time and I'm walking around and seeing where I need to take material off and where maybe we should add some. So over on here, we have a nice line that goes down there. But on the other side, we might need to pack a little bit more in. You're gonna correct that? Okay. Great, so Alex is correcting. He just um, picked up some of the wet sand. Yeah, and we can add on sometimes. You right. know, if you take a little bit too much off, it's not the end of the world. You can just get a bit of wet sand yes. and paste it on. But don't keep carving away to perfection because you're going to carve your whole tower. We've seen it many times. Okay, so Greg's getting ready to cut this roof line. So watch what he does. He's got this small level and a we call small... This a torpedo level. Okay, a torpedo level. And he's using that as a guide. And any particular type of palette knife you have there? Um, you know, I like the shape, uh, but I don't know if they've given it any kind of a name other than maybe a skew number P4828. Right, right, okay, yeah. all right, okay. So he's scribing again. And now, wait, hold. So Alex is veneering on some wet sand to help him find that clone shape. Some sands you can do this with, like this sand. Other beaches, the sand's just too coarse and you won't be able to do that. You have to evaluate your beach and your sand and experiment. And now Alex is going in with this, tra is that a trowel? Yeah, masonry trowel. Masonry trowel, and he's, you see how the angle of that is bringing the wall of the turret out. Okay, <laughs> all right, that part just got cut out because I'm losing my patience. <laughs> it's, you missed nothing. Okay, so the important part of this cut, we've made our lines nice and straight, they're aligned very well. We're going to take our tool and instead of scraping it out, we're going to make two cuts. Don't scrape it out yet. Hold on. Let me go in because it's all shadowy and, and all I can do is aim. The sun is really bad. All right, so and, and what you're going to do is go in on an angle. Don't chop straight in. Because castle windows have these, I'm not going to get the name right, but they're called like arrow slot windows that, you know, go look up castles from medieval times and this is how they're shaped and it was so that the archers could protect themselves and still shoot the arrows out the window. So I'm going to cut a line underneath this roof to give the eave more detail. And a shadow line. We want to get that shadow line. I love that window. It's like the special window in alignment with the roof ridge. Meanwhile, that 
you know, these windows were being carved. Greg got started on the next outcropping, wing, roof line. All right, so I'm gonna walk out this outbuilding or wing that's off the tower. And what I do is I find a level spot, spot on this roof. Might need to talk a little louder. Okay. So I'm looking for level, and now I've got level. And I know from here, I can start to create the roof slope each way. And I'll give it a Dutch dormer look. So that's the very beginning of the next building. Alex is doing the hand packing to get that stair up in the air. Such a beautiful day here to do a little sandcastle building workshop at Salt Creek Beach in beautiful Laguna Niguel, California, underneath the Ritz-Carlton. Hope you're having a great day. I know we are. On December 20th, it's 72 degrees and we're in shorts. different type of window to match that roof line from the from the uh, wing of the building below detail details that's what's going to make your sandcastle look professional level to find the vertical surface of this this uh, castle wall Okay, so this is why our castles look like buildings that have been built. So, Greg just used that, what was that level called? Torpedo level. Torpedo level and he laid it against to find where the plum was. Alex is going to do stairs now. So, he's cutting away sand. For where he's gonna put the staircase. In his mind, he knows where where it is. We're just watching and looking at his technique. And he just put some sand in that water bucket because he's gonna need some wet pack. Alex, show us where your stairs are gonna start. So I've been building up this pad right here, and this will be the foundation for the stairs that I'm gonna curl up and around where these chuck marks are. And I've made these uh, etches, these marks in the side of our nice castle, because it will help the stairs stick to the side, rather than kind of peel off if anything happens. So I've made these score marks, and I'm going to build up off this strong foundation and make some stairs. So it looks like he just took away to put back on. But if you were listening closely, he had to prepare a good solid level base for these stairs. And now this wet sand will be more pliable and he'll be able to carve these stairs out. And as well, you heard him say that along the base of this turret, he made some score lines so that 
the newer, wetter, fresher sand will have the ability to adhere. The snake is over here on this wing of the building and he's making the roof line. Remember he talked about this Dutch style roof. So what did you do? You, you, you scored the area and then you cut your roof line. Yeah. Yeah? Is that what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, is that what happened? <laughs> So I'm gonna lower this wall down into the into the volcano or into the mound. I'm gonna make this the grand entry into the uh, castle. I'm it's the gonna, grand entry into the castle. To the castle, and he's cu he's cutting out a road. I'm gonna make a big entry doorway with like a drawbridge gate because every castle needs a big gate. So, um, okay, so when I turned on to do this segment, what I wanted to show was, if you could just point out that roof line you cut away. This one? No. This one? Underneath. Yeah, this is Yes. The and then on the side over here you were doing... Yeah, I turned it, I turned the corner with the roof to give it a nicer look. He turned the corner with the roof to give it a nicer look. Oh, and Alex is doing stairs. Hold on got like 30 more of these to do so all right well we haven't seen one we want to see the technique so you cut down which is the riser and you cut in which is the step Ta -da. okay let's see it again you cut down which is the riser and in which creates the step so he's just gonna go down riser step riser, step and then lift out. And he's making stairs. There we go. I've always wanted to cut the sand. Yeah, there's no cutting in and no gouging and poking the sand out. It's not done that way. That's not what carving is. That would be destroying. This is carving. Alex is finishing up his stairs. And okay, so as long as Greg's body casts a shadow. You can see this door. So he put some more detail on the door and then he cut the bottom of the gate and now he's making a roadway. And that'll come down and curve around and have that very castle-y look. Now, he, now he's put diagonal scribe lines in one direction and then the other. Our goal here is just to show you some of the basic tips to the castle. The tower, a building, kind of the entry gate, a road, a stairway. And you can start combining them any way you want to make your castle unique to what is in your mind. Have um, kind of a wall on the side of the road. And that wall helps uh, create a shadow down on the road. And Sorry. Gives the road some detail. Sorry, I almost fell in the water hole. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Okay. <laughs> you have to hire a camera person. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, I like roads to bend and wind and twist. Roads that are too straight are, in most cases, boring. So this road's going to come out, and it's going to wind. It gets... Mind if I take a picture of that? Go ahead. The road gets bigger as it enters the castle. There you go. You're welcome. It's really quite dry. Our well has gotten a little bit more shallow because the tide is going out. There's still some water there for us. And notice how if we notice the uh, sand is getting too grainy or too powdery, we can always just add a bit more water. That helps the workability a little bit. Helps us achieve smoother, more professional looking cuts. So right.
then I'm using the brush to uh, just finish off that road to give it a nice uh, finish, polished look. Sometimes using the biggest tool for the job means using the shovel. It's got a nice straight edge that you can take advantage of to make some big cuts. Getting a lot of material out of the way. Oh, and don't leave your snacks unsupervised. <laughs> and making that wall that he talked about, because this is a very detailed house. Outside wall. I wrote it off as a So we started it off with the top of the tower. As I, as we carved down from the top, we created this windows and stairwell. Then we created the outbuilding, and we created the road that leads to the outbuilding. And we ended up with a composition that turned out pretty fun. So what's going on now? We're clearing away the sand from our tower. Big chops of the shovel. Just to reveal more height get some more uh, contrast with the surrounding beach. You know, that was all that sand that we shoveled up earlier, and you don't have to use all of it, but it, can, it essentially gives you more options. It gives you more ability to have some height, have some breadth. You can always chop the sand away easily, um, but adding it back is more difficult. So we always like to add more at the very beginning and chop it away easily rather than not add enough and then realize later, oh shoot, there's not enough sand and we gotta spend all this time adding more. Now we're finishing off the eave lines on that building.
video and staying with us and learning how to build a sand castle. We hope you liked our video. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the like button, make some comments. Well, share the video. Yeah. Right? Get it Every out there. Every time you share this with your friends, we get to spread the good word about this awesome form of art that anybody can do at their local beach. All it takes is maybe a little bit of water, a little bit of effort. You can make an awesome sculpture just like this too. So please like, subscribe, ask us any questions in the comments. We'll be more than happy to answer, or maybe make another video to explain it a bit more. And just keep on doing awesome art and following us on our journey. Awesome, you guys, thanks for staying with us to the end. We love it, we'll see you at the beach. Bye.